Over 50 countries require labeling of GMOs, but here in the United States, no labeling is required at all of any kind. Even though 90% of Americans were polled by ABC News saying that they would like GMOs to be labeled, largely so that they could avoid them, our government has been completely unresponsive to that. There have been repeated calls for labeling of genetically engineered foods, and the industry has effectively blocked those initiatives repeatedly with expensive campaigns in various states because they simply don't want the public to be able to choose. So these are our 100-year-old coffee trees. They live for a long time. This tree is already starting to get ripe. If you notice, some of the, some of the beans are getting red. The coffee industry is six, seven hundred small farmers in Kona, people who have been, you know, working these farms for a long time and who'd like to keep their coffee pure. But we'll be picking these tomorrow. If genetically engineered coffee were to be planted in the Kona district, it would be disastrous. There are three varieties of genetically engineered coffee that are being worked on. So once the pollen started to spread, the beans that form, they would be genetically engineered. And basically the entire coffee industry came together on this and was on the same page. We don't want GMO coffee in Hawaii. If you get GMO, you will not ever get the price that you get now for your coffee. So um, it would be quite disastrous if it were to be allowed to either be field tested or commercially planted anywhere near a coffee growing region. Here we're looking at a cornfield. Looks like any kind of cornfield. So we can't tell by looking at this cornfield whether it's genetically engineered or not. The genetic engineering industry has been able to maintain a culture of secrecy in which the public is not informed of where crops are being grown. Even lawmakers are not allowed to know where these crops are being grown. The bees in Kona can travel up to seven miles during the day, collecting pollens from that wide of an area. Well, what if my garden here were on Kauai, or Maui, or Oahu on the North Shore, or Molokai? I would be extremely concerned about the cross-pollination between my open-pollinated corn and pollens coming from genetically engineered corns that are in the area, it could be up to seven miles. Genetically engineered seed of corn, of canola, of soybeans, has already contaminated the seed supply for conventional crops throughout the United States. Once they release it, they've let the genie out of the bottle and there's no pulling it back. If we put out DDT or lead, and you make a mistake, well, stop using lead, stop using asbestos, clean it up. How do you recall a life form? Hmm? And then we begin to realize that, well, it wasn't only the transfer of the pollens that was dangerous, but it was the bacteria that they were putting in these plants could actually fall into the ground from the plant itself and go into the soil. And if, you, if other plant roots picked up this back, same bacteria, they could get into the plants. All of our biodiversity that has sustained us for hundreds and thousands of years are going to become contaminated because the islands are so small. I mean, you cannot stop the contamination. Biofarm crops are crops that have been genetically engineered to produce pharmaceuticals and drugs and industrial chemicals. For example, my body makes insulin. You want to make insulin? Why don't we just take my gene for insulin, stick it in the corn, grow the corn, and harvest insulin? Crops that have been grown in Hawaii are corn plants that have been engineered to produce experimental AIDS vaccines, experimental hepatitis vaccines, experimental swine diarrhea vaccines. The substances that are being grown in these 
biofarm crops could have very serious impacts. They can produce an, a severe allergy. They can produce anaphylactic shock. This is one of the GMO fields. And now you can see the preschool is right up there. Not even 100 feet from the end of the field. And then you get the baseball park. And you get the kupuna housing right there. The old folks home, home in and a little bit down is Kanakakai School, one of the biggest schools, elementary schools on the island. And the wind blows right to this whole place. There are rules. When you bring things out into the field, plant crops blowing all over the wind, guys breathing it, children living next to school, you better show me it's safe before we bring this in. Right now we stay on the west side of Kanakakai town. This is where they um, do a lot of planting. They do a lot of open field testing right there. So it's on both sides of our, our town. Hawaii is a particularly bad place to be hosting all of these field tests because we're geographically small. We have a huge number of endangered species, more than any other place. We have densely populated areas that are right near our agricultural areas. Here we are in Waimea, and this is pretty much the greatest concentration of uh, genetically engineered field tests on Kauai. But I think what's important here is to see the proximity to the town. Of course, it's right along the Waimea River, and the river goes right out to the ocean. That's another one of our concerns, is what's, what's happening to the debris, uh, the genetic material from these crop tests that's blowing into the town. Earth Justice in 2003 filed a lawsuit against the U.S. Department of Agriculture to enforce the environmental laws with respect to biofarm crops. We had to spend months just to find out where some of these crops were being grown and what was being grown. So after more than two and a half years of litigation, the judge ruled in the plaintiff's favor and said that they have to assess the environmental and human health impacts of these crops before they allow private companies to go out and plant them and expose people and the environment to these crops. The biofarm algae case was a case in which a couple of biotech companies wanted to bring in a novel genetically modified organism producing experimental drugs to the pristine Kona coast on the island of Hawaii. One of the world's leading experts on algae said that if a single cell or single drop of this genetically modified algae got out into the Hawaii environment, it would be virtually impossible to recall. The drugs, the experimental drugs that are produced in this algae have never been tested for their impacts on human health. So what we're talking about here is basically an open air experiment using the Kona community and the people of Hawaii as guinea pigs. Several community groups based in Kona, represented by Earth Justice, took the State Board of Agriculture to court, and they won. And the court ruled that before any agency approves such a project for such a novel experiment, the state had to conduct a proper environmental study of the, of the potential risks to the environment and people of Hawaii.